Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement worth having. When I continue my quest for a new opportunity in work, a new opportunity in political consulting, someone in a community of retail employees decided to hack or interfere with my rights to my own complete computer through their, knife, their Wi-Fi network. That continues to happen up and down the block. There could be potentially two to four reasons that the hacking is going on outside of the personal attack that I've been receiving since I've been here now approximately a year and a half. People who live in poverty are often jealous of people's past, so that creates an harassment opportunity for a group of blacks or a team of Hispanic workers or even people who work on behalf of municipalities and drive U.S. DOT related trucks. You see, it only takes one fat ass female gossip to walk in and out of stores with information that she has either illegally or immorally taken or has made up completely. But physical assault today is still something that American citizens do not like hearing about. Sexual assault of any woman, man, or child is something that most people are offended about and feel is not only an immoral act, but is also an incredible act of hatred. People who like to drive through parking lots way too fast might be trying to make the really, really fast nanny nanny boo boo run of, did you know it was me touching you in the night? What I can tell you is that people have the rights to their own body. But when a man of faith grows his beard, and his beard is regularly cut off out of jealousy by some male person who can't grow, grow a beard, or some inappropriateness of some Hispanic person who's trying to teach a lesson, or some arrogance of a black cutting or hair cutting shop because the white man said, I know you're wanting to cut my hair for free, but I don't want you to cut my beard. It's still a beginning of a hate crime. If it's an actual biological family member, then it's an inappropriate use of personal time. You see, under all the laws of America, it hits three different specifications of abuse of those laws. The first law is physical assault. It is a form of mutilation and molestation. Under the second law, it is a form of religious hatred or a hate crime because the beard was grown for faith. Third, it is a sexual assault because beards, body hair, are secondary sex characteristics and the faggot who keeps doing the drive-by on the bicycle is probably seen by everyone but he looks so natural to the community that he thinks he's clever. He is a white man who's probably in his 50s and maybe he lost his job with the police based on how tall and lanky he is and stupidity of decisions he made. But here's what men like to say. I don't like this so I'm going to treat it in a different way. I don't care about this so I'm just going to ignore the possibilities of this. I'm going to teach that man a lesson because he's monkeying my work somehow and the truth is no. You made bad decisions on the job. You chose to get your employer involved when you met someone through your work and decided to use any form of those three areas of, of assault to harm someone sleeping in the night. The cutting of my beard is the least of the physical and sexual assaults that I've experienced since I've been in Champaign, Illinois, uh, close to the Urbana, Illinois campus of University of Illinois. When I first arrived here, I visited one collegiate event that God led me to to talk to some girl behind a counter who was a little overweight, but I said, if there's an opportunity for me to talk about personal safety for your organization to explain a few things, I'd like to do that. The presumption on that conversation was that it was a private and confidential conversation. She alleged that she had the right 
to discuss that with her group and see if they wanted that. But all throughout my time here, someone has immorally put their hands in and out of my pockets, taking all sorts of things. Not only my paper and my pens, but my privately held business cards or notes on sticky paper, or what we call sticky notes, of people's information and email addresses and phone numbers. So my question to you and my question to you is who in your life has the right to abuse your privacy of information? Privacy of information acts are abused when people who work in industries get information because of the context of their jobs and then they go off and start talking about it despite the laws such as medical rights or HIPAA laws. The reality is that a person's private body, and I talk about this a lot because of the immorality of people that I see and hear and have to suffer through through the community of black married men soliciting and cooing at women or white old men ogling them and not saying a thing and they're there with their wives. And we all know about the immoralness of pornography and its impact on the healthy aspects of what Jesus Christ offered us through the Bible and what other companies or other organizations, and I use Christianity because we are allegedly, predominantly, grown here, founded here in America on a Christian ideology of Christ. But here's what I can say to you. When you attack someone in the middle of the night like a fucking faggot coward, and I don't mean it in an indisparaging or a disparaging way on people who are homosexual or lesbian or whatever the hell bisexualism is to people today, and I don't know what a Q is exactly because it implies that they do something, but we don't give a shit who they do it with. You see, human sexuality was never meant to be a public topic. Because in America today, human decency still reigns. And the private body parts of someone underneath their clothes typically remain private unless the person is one of those people that likes to display their body for a couple reasons. They're incredibly overweight and hot all the time, so they prefer to wear thinner clothes, less coverage, and it makes them feel more comfortable in the hot, inclement weather and the mugginess of our days or they have a beautiful body in their mind and they want to display it in order to get information out there in the community of, hey, I'm available. But here's what I know about most people of decency. They recognize that people totally, absolutely, 110% have the right to decide about their clothing. But in my case, when I left a particular incar incarceration situation that I didn't like, because I was constantly being interfered with by local sheriff and police, which was a form of stalking and harassment and municipal mobbing, which I have more than 100% proof on. What I can tell you is that my clothes had been ripped. My beautiful silk garments that were purchased by me with the help of God on my paltry income as I was continuing my way out of struggle, out of harassment, were ripped up the side. I have a great Harley flame shirt that has now been sliced at the bottom or cut with scissors, which is the beginning of some sort of personal attack on my choice of fashion. And truthfully, I don't know who's done it, but they were never ripped like that. I never caught them on anything to rip like that, and openly they began to rip, and then they started to get caught. I also have a marvelous shirt that I love called Magic, and it's a military print and it too had someone cut it. So whoever the personal attacker is has a real vendetta and is a real bent, but the bottom line is whatever is being expressed across the community is such a horrible hate crime that it has crossed all barriers of the law. Now what we know about sheriff and police officers today that they do participate in these things. We hear about it, we see it on the news almost every day that a person who is employed to protect American citizens and their lawful rights under both internationally produced treaties, such as the Declaration of Human Rights, where no one has the right to be militarized or stalked by a military, 
and where everyone has the right to appropriate medical care for their own life and their own choices of doctors, which is what the original documents talked about, and the right to reserve their body from scientific, horrific experiences that were a part of the Third Reich out of World War II and the sexual inappropriateness of what Indians and Muslims are known around the world for doing to women to make it so that they cannot feel during sexual contact and that men have superiority in their world. No offense to those of you who are Americanized and don't feel that anymore. But those people still exist across the world. And the abuse of and mutilation of female genitalia is huge. At the same time, people who don't like other types of people might mutilate a male's body parts. But what we absolutely know through the entire concept of human development and na nature experiment, not at all true concepts of nature, is that malformities do occur in the womb. 